Just what exactly is this New World Order? And how is it related to the September 11th attacks? We've heard a lot about it. We have heard so many people mention it. But what exactly does a New World Order symbolize? What does it stand for? Who exactly is pushing for this New World Order to take place? And most importantly, what is it going to mean for us, the people of planet Earth? We're going to take a look now over the next 10 minutes at all of these questions. Most smart people already know a lot of this. However, we do know there are a lot more people still totally unaware about what's taking place in our very society. This is the video clip for them. It should surprise nobody to learn that the Bilderberg founder member David Rockefeller was also the instigator in the building of the mighty World Trade Center Twin Towers. Back then, gaining permission from his brother Nelson Rockefeller, coincidentally who was the governor of New York at the time. Just 55 days before September 11, 2001, it was the first time in 33 years of the building's history that it had changed ownership and was handed over from the New York Port Authority to a private business concern called Silverstein Realty run by Larry Silverstein in partnership with another well-known real estate tycoon called Frank Lowy who was the CEO of the Westfield Shopping Center Group. Now who gave these guys the lease despite these two being the lowest bidders on the contract? Here he is, Louis M. Eisenberg, a Bush campaign party fundraiser and at the time the New York Port Authority manager who the same as Silverstein and Lowy were coincidentally all senior board members of the Anti-Defamation League. Now Silverstein and Lowy paid just 10 percent of the 99 year total of 124 million dollars. They paid a mere 12 million dollars deposit US with promissories to pay the rest once the office revenue started to roll in. When he gained the lease, Larry Silverstein hired a new company to take care of security, a company called Securicom, later called Stratasec. In fact, five days after he got the 99-year lease, Larry Silverstein changed the insurance contract to include a terrorist attack. The president's brother Marvin Bush, believe it or not, was on the board of directors of this company, Securicom, and the president's cousin, Wart Walker III, was the CEO. According to public records, Securicom also took control of electronic security for Dulles and Logan airports, the supposed airports where the supposed hijackers got in, as well as taking United Airlines security, key strategic positions in selling the 9-11 lie. From his initial deposit of $12 million, once the 9-11 event took place, Silverstein and Lowy then cashed in on insurance claims to a grand total of $7.2 billion. That's $7,200 million. Not a bad day at the races for Lucky Larry, who was supposed to be in a meeting in the WTC Towers on September 11, but claims he was just running late on that day. Coincidentally enough, on the same day as his son Roger and daughter Lisa, who was supposed to be working on the 88th floor of the WTC1 tower, coincidentally the whole Silverstein family were also running late on September 11. Even more coincidentally, the towers themselves were something of a liability. They were in very bad need of removal of tons of cancer-causing asbestos from the steel beams, and the cleanup bill was going to run at least into two or three billions of dollars. The cost to disassemble these two structures would have been at least 15 billion. At least five times prior to September the 11th, the Port Authority attempted to get a demolition order on the Twin Towers, but were refused by the City of New York based on health grounds, because a demolition would have blanketed Manhattan in a thick dust cloud of heavy metals and asbestos fibers. It was very convenient then for everyone involved that Osama bin Laden chose these particular targets, the Twin Towers. Or did he? We've actually been told that Osama himself confessed to the attacks in the infamous confession video. However, the videotape itself has been wrongly translated by the mainstream media and has been found to contain actors portraying Osama bin Laden. 
In fact, Osama himself has at least on five separate occasions denied any responsibility to the attacks. Yet this fact alone has never managed to surface on mainstream media. The authenticity of this tape comes into question even more when one realizes it surfaced after being handed to U.S. Marines from the Pakistani ISI Secret Service. The head of the ISI coincidentally paid over $100,000 into Muhammad Attar's personal account just days prior to 9-11. And then we have Building 7. This 47-story steel frame structure mysteriously came down at 5.20 in the afternoon of September 11 at freefall speed. This was a building that was not greatly damaged by the Twin Towers collapse. It was not hit by any aircraft. And conveniently, it was covered under Larry Silverstein's amended insurance policy. In fact, Silverstein himself slipped up on a PBS documentary in 2002 by admitting he gave the order himself to personally pull the building. This kind of operation would have taken months in the planning. It cannot be done, as Larry said, in a matter of hours. The collapse of this building specifically benefited a lot of people, especially the president, then George W. Bush. He was going to be personally called to give evidence in the Supreme Court of his insider dealings, associated with the collapse of WorldCom and energy giant Enron, which he and Kenny Boy were implicated as being a part of. In fact, there were many cases that had to be dropped because of the demolition and destruction of this building. WTC-7 was the most federally intensive building in the entire WTC complex, housing many departments and agencies such as the IRS, the U.S. Secret Service, the BATF, NSA, CIA, SEC, and NIAC Securities. It is estimated by Reuters that some three to 4,000 individual criminal cases were dropped from investigation due to destruction of evidence when WTC-7 came down. And then we have this incredible admission from WTC employee Barry Jennings, who told the Loose Change guys he witnessed a mass of dead bodies in the building when he was being rescued there on 9-11. And you know you can feel when you're stepping over people. Incredibly, since his interview, Barry Jennings has mysteriously passed away in August of 2008, just two days before the release of the NIST report and BBC documentary, The Third Tower, was released. News of Mr. Jennings' death did not surface until a month later. The cause of his death is still unknown. But there are even more coincidences than just this. We have an admission from Tom Kenny, a FEMA rescue worker, that in fact FEMA were there on the scene, in place, and in position, ready to go the night before be the September you, uh, 11 attacks. We arrived on uh, late Monday night and went into action on Tuesday morning. And then we have the PNAC plan. These scumbags were calling for a new Pearl Harbor type event to transform America into a militaristic style empire in September of 2000. Their document they released called Rebuilding America's Defenses actually states the process of transformation is likely to be a long one absent some catastrophic and catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor. And then we have this scumbag, once again David Rockefeller, the proponent for en masse population reduction. He's quoted in September 94 as saying, we are on the verge of a global transformation. All we need is the right major crisis and the nations will accept the new world order. Even if you do not agree that 9-11 was an inside job, all this evidence before us indicates that September 11 attacks were allowed to happen. They were even assisted to happen. According to the media advisory about the final report of the 9-11 Commission, the total budget for the total investigation for WTC attacks was $15 million. Contrast this, according to the General Accounting Office, which the government spent nearly $80 million alone on the investigations into Whitewater, Monica Lewinsky, and Clinton-related matters. We have more money that was spent looking into Bill Clinton's private life than was spent investigating the biggest mass murder of Americans. When you consider that September 11th, 1941 was the date that the Pentagon had its groundbreaking ceremony, and September 11th, 1991 was the date that Daddy Bush called for a new world order one has to wonder if indeed order. these people have now got their new world order that they've been asking for. 
Did we allow them by giving up our liberty and security to take both away from us? The fact of the matter is, it's never too late. As long as you can imagine a place and a time where these people are caught and pay for their crimes, then we will all live to see the day when their new world order comes crashing to the ground.